If you're a pro Airtable user, or if you're thinking about becoming one, the blocks are one of the most valuable things that are available to you. But I notice time and time again, people not using those blocks to their fullest potential. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you the top two types of blocks that we use over and over again to help clients with creating dashboards so that they can get those high level KPIs that they need in order to run their business. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help businesses to get organized and automated, saving them a ton of time, allowing them to work more on building their business instead of getting stuck in the day-to-day -day grind. As I mentioned in the intro, we are going to be talking about dashboards here. So if you are new to Airtable and you want to see how you can put together a nice, easy dashboard that uh, puts out some high-level KPIs for you, you've come to the right place. So before I get into it though, if you are new to this channel and you haven't already done so, please click subscribe. Uh, we will make sure that you get the opportunity to level up your Airtable game. We are putting out constant videos and uh, making sure that everybody knows how awesome these tools are. So with that being said, let's just jump on into my screen. What you see here is uh, a recurring database that we did just a couple weeks ago about uh, how to bring payment information in to your uh, CRM. So real quick high level here, what we are looking at is we have contacts here and we have a list of different contacts with their contact information. And then we have a list of the opportunities. Now you'll see that this is different than contacts because an opportunity, we could have this multiple opportunities with the same contact, right? So we have a linked relationship between opportunities and contacts. This is a very common thing that we see in almost all CRMs. Now, the last part of that is we're linking this opportunity to a payment. Okay, so that's the third and final part. If you wanna see this in more detail, I will make sure to include a link to the video where we built this, along with the automation of how to get that payment information into your database. But the point of this is over here on the right side of my screen, and that is the, uh, the dashboard that we built using the blocks. So specifically, we're gonna be looking at two blocks the two most popular blocks that we use here uh, time and time again are, uh, if we drop in here, this is the summary block. We'll go into a little bit more detail here, but as you see, the summary block will output just a number. So this is great if you're looking to measure just a simple KPI uh, that is in some sort of number format, whether that's a percentage, a de you know, a decimal, dollars, whatever. And then the other one that we're going to be looking at is the chart block. And the chart block is great because it shows you, you know, things over time as they uh, relate to things. Well, I should say they don't have to be over time. As you see here, we have uh, an example where we're looking at dollars in the pipeline uh, broken out by the type of offer. So if we have, uh, imagine a company that has three different types of things that it offers and uh, or three different types of services. And we can see, you know, the, the dollar amount for each of those things that's currently in our pipeline. Alternatively, we can also uh, look at these things over time. There are a number of ways we can look at this data, but the bottom line is we, we get to see it uh, in some sort of graphical chart as compared to just a single output. So let's jump into the summary block first, but I'm gonna lay some ground rules in terms of how to think of pretty much all of the blocks in Airtable. All blocks, let me just open up the settings here. You'll see that all blocks look at, or almost all blocks, look at a table, and then they look at a specific view. So it's very important that you have a view built inside of your table that is showcasing just those records that you want to bring into the block. By that I mean, let's say for example, uh, we wanted to see what's in our current pipeline as we have an example here. Well, that is, uh, if I were to drill back into this one more time, you'll see that I'm looking at the opportunities table and I'm looking at the pipeline view. So back in opportunities, you'll see that I have a couple of different views built. An all records view, which has a number of different, you know, opportunities that we've created here. And then we also have a pipeline view. Well, what's special about the pipeline view? Let's take a look. We have a filter set that says, I only wanna see records where the open status is open, and I only want to see records that have been created in the past month. Now, this is a very common use case. If you're looking at your current pipeline, you don't need to see all the records from 
you know, 90 days ago or whatever. Also, if you've closed a deal already, or if you've heard back and, you know, that person declined, it's not an open deal, right? So it's not, or rather, it's not an open opportunity. And so you don't want to bring that in when you're looking at your current pipeline. So imagine if in this case, we're just looking at our current pipeline amount, uh, we need to make sure that we have these types of filters applied to the view. And then we need to make sure that that summary block looks at that view. So for example, you'll see that the current pipeline currently is 13,500. If I change this view to all records, immediately that number changes. It immediately goes up to 55,000 because it's no longer applying the same filters to this data. And so it's very important that in all of the different things that you build, that you are putting together very precise uh, uh, views inside of your database. All right, so now that we've had a chance to look at this, let's go ahead and close this one out. And same rules are going to apply to the chart block. It's just a little bit more complicated, but not much. So in the chart block, let's go ahead and pop this one open. You'll see that the same rules apply. We need to first map it to a table. We need to then map it to a view. And then we have the choice of looking at either a bar graph or a line, scatter, pie, or donut. I almost always tend to use bar graphs, but that's just me. Just know that all of these options are available to you, uh, whichever helps you to visualize your data the best. And the biggest difference between the summary and the uh, chart is that the chart is going to require both an X and Y axis. So in this case, we want to see these opportunities, uh, or rather the pipeline. Uh, and you'll see that again, we're looking at the opportunities and the pipeline view. Uh, so the same data that we were looking at in the previous uh, block, but in this case, we want to group it by the opportunity type, and that is the X or the horizontal axis. So if we were to drop back into our data really quickly, you'll see that we have these three types of opportunities. And so we're just telling it, or we're telling Airtable that we want to see this represented in these three buckets. And so uh, there we have it. And so that we make that our X axis. And if we want to show the label, we can. And then the Y axis, of course, it, we have the option of either just counting the number of records or applying a certain field. And in this case, we want to look at the potential value of this of this pipeline. And so we're looking at that expected value and we're using the aggregate function and we're choosing to sum it. So in the case where if I were to flip back to the raw data back here, we have two different offers in the offer three bucket. Let's go ahead and find the uh, last piece of data here, which is currently hidden. I'll bring in the expected value on the switch formula. And this is what we were using to uh, sum up inside of our chart. And so this is 4,500, easy enough to do in our heads to see that these two opportunities at, uh, at offer three are going to total to 9,000. And so that's exactly what we have here in our uh, table. And then of course, since there's only one that is offered or option two, then that 3,000 is what's here and then 1500 is what we would expect in the offer one bucket. Now the other fun part about the chart as we've done in the second one here is that we can group that as I mentioned over time. And so in this case, if you look at our X axis, we're looking at the date created field and we've chosen that to bucket the values. And what that means is we can lump a bunch of things together uh, using the date field as uh, as we choose. And so in this case, we want to group them by month. So if something happened on July 1st, or Ju you know, July 31st, then uh, we want to make sure that it's still getting pulled into here uh, in the July bucket, right. And so you see that we have the opportunity to break that out by day week, all the way up to quarter year day of week, etc. But in this case, month is going to serve our needs just fine. And so we're looking at all the data here. And an important note here, of course, since we want to see, in this case, the opportunities over time, we are not looking at the same view that we've used in the two other uh, summary block or the two other blocks that we've put together. In this case, we're looking at the all records view. And we are bucketing those values by month. And that allows us to see month over month, how uh, we did in terms of potential offers, right? Similarly, here, we're going to look again at the value, the expected value field that we put together. 
and, uh, and we'll aggregate those again and use sum. You do, of course, have some other uh, types of aggregations that you can run. You could try a min where you pull in the minimum field. If I change to max, it will show you the max uh, field that shows up or the mean if you want to take an average. Of course, that's not very helpful in the case where you're trying to add together all the opportunities that are in the pipeline. So sum works best for us. And that's it. Now, once you've built these, then these things, these dashboards are completely updated or update completely in the background based on the underlying data. And that's what makes this so darned powerful is the fact that we don't have to come in and readjust our dashboard on a weekly or monthly basis as we would if we were in some program like Excel. And now this is just updating automatically based on that underlying data. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you have some business questions that you'd like to run by us, definitely swing by our website. The link will be in the description and we offer up time so that we can hop on a call with you. You can book directly there and we can set something up that works for both of us. What we'll be discussing is building a solution for you that puts all of your data in one place and gives you a nice concise dashboard so that you know what's happening in your business at all times. Additionally, we will work on building custom bespoke automation for you so that you can eliminate the time that you spend on repetitive tasks and save countless hours every week. So if that's of interest, definitely swing by our website and check out the different offers that we have there.